Hello and welcome to Science Bang. Uh, in this uh, episode we're going to be doing some basic uh, slicing for 3D printing. If you've already done a lot of printing before then this video probably isn't for you because you probably know all the basics but if you're just starting out or it's your first print and you want to know how to use or how to slice or slice in Prusa Slicer then this video is probably for you. Uh, if you could give us a like down below that's really appreciated, it helps us uh, grow as a channel and bring you more uh, tutorials and stuff like that. So to start off with, we're just going to be going on Thingiverse, and we're just going to be picking uh, a random um, print just just to slice. So we just go explore and things, and we will see what comes up. Uh, I don't know. Let's go for something that is a little bit more uh, tricky. Let's go for this little planter. That looks quite interesting. Um, we've got some interesting geometry here um, and overhangs we can talk about um, stuff like that. So if we click download all files. Uh, Wait for the ad to finish. Three, two, one, and downloading. Okay, so now this is downloaded, uh, and we've just opened up all, all that we've downloaded. Um, and the three MS we're not going to worry about, but we're going to want to look at the uh, STL file. So actually, there's interesting that there's two here. I guess there's the outer body and the inner planter pot. So I've already got it set up. Um, so when I double click on these, it's going to open up in Prusa Slicer. I'll just set my default um, STL. Uh, program to be Prusa Slicer, uh, otherwise you could go into the import menu in Prusa Slicer. But either way, we're going to look at, let's try the inner pot first and just double click on that and it's going to import it to Prusa Slicer. And here we go. So you can see it's already orientated it probably uh, in, well, I think this is quite a bad orientation because that overhang there, it's going to have to bridge it unless we put a load of supports in and it's going to be an absolute uh, nightmare to, to, to print. So we could just, so there's two, two options, either we can click over here into the rotate and we can rotate along any of the axes. Uh, however, there's a simpler way, which is this button right here, which is um, place on face or as a keyboard shortcut, which is just F. Um, and what that does is, is bring you up uh, this here. So it kind of shows you all the different faces. And at the moment, this is the face that's facing down. You can see through geometry there's lots of faces along here, but we don't want to worry about those. But this face on the top, if you just click it, and we're automatically going to orientate ourselves um, on that axis there. Now, there are still some overhangs. Um, it's quite a gentle slope, so I'm not overly worried about these overhangs. If you had a, a cheaper printer, I would be more worried with a Prusa printer or or even some of the, uh, the better or, or a well-tuned um, uh, uh, ender printer like ender 3 but if it's well tuned then you could could easily get away with, with that overhang so we're going to assume that for now um, some of the cheap um, cheap clones you get you might struggle but it's still worth giving it a go um, now so what we're going to do is that's nicely centered uh, we're happy with the orientation and now we're going to pick our profile so Bruce slice is quite nice in that it's got some um, generic profiles already for you to go and you can add or remove them um, if you're just starting out, you'd probably be printing in PLA, although it's not that much harder to print in PETG on the Prusa, but some of the cheaper printers, it's that bit harder to get up to that temperature. So for now, we're going to assume we're going to be printing with a generic cheap PLA filament. Now, bear in mind that Prusa printer does also work for other printers than Prusa uh, printers. For example, it's got profiles built in now for things like the Ender 3 printer and stuff like that. So perfect to get started with this slicer. And it's a slicer I'd recommend unless you want to fork out a couple of hundred quid for Simplify 3D. So we selected our generic PLA. Now, um, normally I would probably say because this is inside a pot, we're not going to see it. You're probably okay with 0.2 mil um, speed. However, if you note here, we've got some fine detail in terms of the, the, the drainage holes. So I'd probably go for a little bit finer, which is uh, maybe 0.15. Um, and again, we don't really care about the quality of this uh, because it's going inside uh, the plant pot. Um, we're we're probably all good there. It's worth noting that a general application, uh, PLA is not food grade, which means that uh, bacteria can easily form in little pockets. Uh, so if I was printing this uh, for myself, I'd probably actually choose PETG because that's a little bit more hardware. It's not UV sensitive. It's less prone to, to harbor bacteria. Uh, and also it's more likely to be watertight uh, for a plant pot. That kind of makes sense. But but for now, we're, we're just going to go with, with PLA. Um, twenty percent infill. That's probably a bit much. We'll we'll drop that down to fifteen percent. Um, infill doesn't need to be massive. 
uh, not unless you're doing really structural stuff. And even then, sometimes a honeycomb infill can give you just as much strength, if not more strength, than going for a higher infill. So don't be tempted to up that up too much. Um, and again, supports, we could have supports here. Um, so if we put this uh, generate supports, um, then we, you know, it may build in supports, but ultimately I don't think we, we, we need those supports on this model. So once you've done that, you could just hit slice and it's going to do some thinking in the background. It might take a few seconds. The more complex your model is and the bigger it is, the more it's going to take time. So what this is doing is analyzing each layer that the printer needs to lay down consecutively in order to build up your, your model and your print. Okay, and here we are. So this is our model. Uh, you can see different colors. So we've got uh, red for where it hits the surface, the build plate. You can see we've got a little um, odd shaped brim there. I don't know why that's happening actually. Uh, I think it's an uneven base. It looks like there's uh, drainage runs, that's why. Um, and then what we can do is here, if we, we can just slide through the print, we can see each layer as it goes down. And uh, yeah, sure enough, it's kind of weirdly angled the base, um, but that should be fine because it's only one layer. So yeah, so you can see how the model builds up there. So if you want to, so you've got the two windows down here, you've got the preview, which is after it's sliced. And if we go back to the build plate, we can actually have a look down here and actually see what's going on a bit more. Um, by the way, if I'm clicking with my middle mouse button to move around and scroll wheel to zoom in and out. So, and then uh, I can use the left mouse click and drag to, to sort of rotate. Um, we can see here that that is all one face, which is interesting that when we slice it, it comes up as potentially multiple uh, layers. But either way, this is now ready to print. So what you'd want to do is you want to click export G-code and uh, save it to an SD card, plug it in your printer and click print and away you go. So thank you for watching. I hope you found this useful. Uh, if you could drop us a like button and subscribe to keep up to date with the latest content, that'd be amazing. And until next time, see you then.